ek het een student gehad wat, um, <laughs> ek sien die klas is al meer as 10 meter voorbij, <laughs> hy is nog steeds daar, dat hy alweer vergeet, hy het gevonnig um, um, online gegaan, en toe het hy iets anders gaan doen, waar sker kwam toe, um, aangeval, dit is, ja, het is, het is klaar met het willen winnen, het is the way in which we, we, um, the way in which we deliver, um, we do whatever is necessary to ensure that um, the quality of learning is not affected, um, and it's as equally challenging for you as for us. Uh, I think we've done well so far, um, but um, yeah, I think everyone needs a break sometime soon, just to sort of change routine for a, for a week. I just need a week, one day to sleep, uh, maybe two days to sleep, um, and then just um, recharge again. Um, but um, I'm pretty sure that's just around the corner. You guys don't have that much time left for the semester. Um, yeah, then it's then it's exams again. I can't believe it. Um, as I said yesterday, um, realizing with shock that um, it's the end of May and today is the start of June. That usually means it's a we're on the downward spiral towards the end of the year, which is good or can be bad. It depends on how we actually change. It. Um, or um, how we adjust to it. Um, at the moment, um, to, to continue where we left off yesterday, um, a, a lot of um, services specifically being, um, 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 having the, being of an um, intangible nature has, has made it very difficult or makes it very difficult for um, a customer to evaluate you and to really grade your the quality of service that they've expected, um, especially because of the intangibility um, characteristic and the fact that um, very often um, 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 the customer is also involved in the service delivery process, um, which um, makes it difficult if you, as, 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 a, as a service provider, don't have a very strong relationship with customers um, and you're obviously not going to um, try and incorporate everybody um, in, in your service delivery process, but um, as we'll see later in this chapter today, you are going to um, you are going to grade your customers according to their loyalty to um, to the service provider. Um, there will be th there's, there's different levels. I mean, um, I think we all um, or your your parents probably more than you. Um, you've got a normal debit card or a check card. Um, and, and, and then you have platinum cards and gold cards and silver cards. It, it basically is, is, is part of the incentives that customers uh, or that, that service providers use to ensure that customers are rated according to their loyalty and um, the contribution that they've made to your, um, to your service. Uh, we'll get to that later on, but um, I think one of the aspects that, that we have addressed yesterday um, in your um, relationship building process um, is that A, you have to keep the customer satisfied and now we're with the next one and that is to retain them and you can only retain them once you have, you, you, you start stand a better chance of, of retaining them if you have a very good relationship with them. Um, the benefits is, 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 is um, of, of retaining customers is um, very much obvious. Um, if you retain a customer, they're going to stay with you longer. They're going to spend more money. Your profitability is going to increase. Your cost um, is going to um, be reduced because you don't spend as much time um, or, or as much money on a particular customer anymore because if they are retained, it means that um, the and the cost to service that customer is not um, as much as it was to initially get them. Um, it's the fact that we have to provide a good customer service because we know that it costs you five times more to get a new customer um, than to keep a current customer happy. So it's obviously um, finding the balance between the cost of keeping current customers happy, uh, in other words, retaining them, uh, because customer retention focuses on, on, on current customers. Um, not new customers. Um, obviously, sales will increase if um, if your customers are retained because they will become loyal, um, and it will increase your brand equity as well. Um, equity, brand equity, we'll see later on in the chapter um, deals with the service, the brand itself, um, um, 
the service that you are providing as well as the relationship that you have with your customers, all three of those components. Um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the two components of customer retention that we'll, um, that we'll address um, now is um, that of customer satisfaction. Um, customer satisfaction and loyalty, um, there's two types of, um, and that is the ad, um, attitudinal one. In other words, that's your attitude towards the company in general. doesn't mean that you are necessarily buying from or using that particular service. It just means that you have a positive um, attitude towards that company. Um, I uh, Let's take an example, for instance. I might like a particular brand of, of clothing because um, I'm, I like what the company does. Um, um, I, um, the image in, in, um, in the community is very good. Um, they're involved in a lot of um, environmental causes and they're always there for a good cause. Um, they do a lot of sponsorships. They're involved with schools and uh, very visible um, and, and present and active in a particular community, or it could be global. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm going to buy their products. It might be that, you know what, I like what they're doing and, and my attitude towards their image and brand and company is positive, but I just can't afford their products. And they're just not in my price range. And it doesn't mean that, um, um, that I don't um, rate them as a good company. Um, often that particular rating um, to, uh, that affect your attitude towards that particular brand or service um, is based on feedback that you get from uh, friends of yours who may be um, our clients with that particular service provider. And then you have your, um, your, your, your um, behavioral uh, satisfaction. Behavioral satisfaction um, and, and um, loyalty um, means that you are actually involved and in supporting that particular brand or service provider. You not just have a positive um, um, attitude towards them, um, you also use their services. Um, in other words, you've taken action um, to, it's a, it's a cognitive um, um, involvement. Um, in other words, you, you've taken action, you've taken all the knowledge that you have, all the positiveness that you had towards the brand, and you're putting that into action by actually supporting that um, particular brand or company or service provider. Customer and relationships, we'll break up into, into more detail in the next few slides. Um, Let's um, look at the outcomes. Remember, if you can, from a couple of slides, from a couple of slides ago, we said that we that image that we had on the screen, that one over there, um, the building process, customer relationship building process, the inputs come from what customers expect, um, how much they are involved, that co-creation, and the quality of the service that you offer. The outcomes is that you want to, you, you are going to retain customers that you've just addressed. Customers are going to be satisfied and then customer loyalty and all of that um, results in um, or all of those are, um, are positive um, outcomes um, or potential outcomes of um, a good relationship that you've built. Um, now, to retain a customer, in other words, to um, um, to impress them to such an extent um, con um, consistently um, so they are considering to uh, continue using your service, you have to do a few things. And some of the things that you can do is that you can actually um, delight the customer by making them feel special, regardless. If they're visiting your premises, for instance, um, a doctor or a dentist or a hairdresser for that matter, Make sure that they feel special. They, they must feel that, wow, they, they are the special client of the day. Um, regardless of, of how it's done, there are small little things that you can do that make a person feel special. Um, but just make sure that their visit to your, um, or their um, using your service is a delightful experience for them. Um, I've never seen somebody who has been treated like, treated like royalty who's not happy with that um, special treatment that they got. Um, and if we, um, and I think to, for, for any business to, to, to buy and, and employees to buy into that kind of um, service delivery, you must do one thing when you, when you um, we must ensure that the philosophy is based on the fact that 
doing that to every customer uh, is actually the right thing to do. The reason why we do it, the reason why we go out of our way to, to, to keep our customers happy and satisfied is because it's the right thing to do. And if it's the right thing to do, the spin-offs, like we just said, would, would be um, enormously positive. Um, and yeah, uh, you'll retain customers and increase your sales and your profits. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Unfortunately, um, it's not that easy because what delights one person is not necessarily going to delight another. So you've got to be very careful um, and and do um, sufficient research. And research we often see as something that you have to. Uh, that's that's time consuming and we don't really have the time to do it. You know what? It's quite simple. If you in your um let's say for instance we take the example of um um you take an example of uh going to the hairdresser. In that conversation that you have, because you don't just sit there with um with a mouthful of tooth and then um look in the mirror straight ahead of yourself the whole time. There's there's a there's a relationship uh, there's a conversation between you and your and your hairdresser, uh, and that is just to create a sort of a atmosphere that you are um, comfortable with, and it's just it, it adds to the um, it adds to the whole experience. Um, it's otherwise you could have gone to um, you, you you could have gone to Macro and and bought some scissors and clippers and and asked one of your family members to cut your hair. That's not why we do this. We use this particular service because we want to engage in in the social interaction. However, it offers you opportunity for as, as a service provider to also do some proper research because you can now, if you if you take note and actually write it down, you don't the customer, you don't have to stop and say, hang on, hang on, that's quite a good one. I want to write, write that down. No, you um, as soon as that particular customer is, is are you finished with that particular customer, write the important things down that you think is valuable feedback that they've given you. You're not asking them survey questions as part of the conversation, but you're keeping the information, um, um, obviously private, but you, you keep the information um, or add the information to your database so you know that next time the person um, sits down um, three, four months from now um, for, for a haircut, um, you have something that you can start off with. And if you can, let's say, for instance, part of the conversation was that the lady said that, um, yeah, um, she's so proud her son is playing his first soccer match this afternoon and whatever. And that's part of the conversation. That's general conversation. But if you wrote that down, the next time she um, she she visits, and if you can in, start the conversation off with it, Lynn, last time you were here, your son was actually playing his first soccer match. How did he go? And how's he doing? How's he, that just that makes that individual feel special. And that is the type of research I'm referring to. To pay attention, and we'll see later on that, uh, not later on in the next, um, in the next, um, in the next fact, so that qualifies as a tactic of, of of trying to retain customers. Listen, listen, listen. But you've heard the old expression that says that you have two ears and one mouth. Keep the one closed and keep the others two open. That works. If you listen and pay attention, you pick up on these small details, and these small details make a massive difference um, in how you gradually build. Because relationship building isn't—it doesn't happen overnight. We, we've said that it's a long-term relationship that you are trying to forge here to ensure that your customers remain loyal to your service and to your business. Um, but it takes time, and any relationship that's worth it um, takes time. Um, there are compromises either way, like in normal relationships between human beings. In, 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 there's no difference in the relationship that you that you are trying to establish with your with your customers, because they are going to they are going to grade you on their experiences um, with you. Right. A few tools that we can use: relationship marketing. We'll see what exactly that means just now. But it's basically regarded as a philosophy. That's the attitude or a philosophy that the organization has towards customer retention. You must do it because you know what the benefits are. You know that it's going to be a win-win for everybody if you retain customers. You have to have you have to stress less about where the next customer is coming from because you know that you have a good solid base that will return to use your service. 
Um, and also, because you, um, um, you've built that relationship, you sometimes even get to the point where you look forward to an appointment um, from a particular customer because um, you've built such a nice relationship over um, um, a professional relationship over a, a period of, um, of time, over a number of years. Um, it can also, if we have to define um, um, relationship marketing, um, we can we can put it down as, as as follows, and that is to identify, to establish, to maintain, and to enhance. And when necessary, sometimes terminate a relationship with a customer um, at a profit, so that um, the objectives of both parties are met. In other words, you are happy because the customer is spending is, has come back to you. He's spending more money, and he will return again in future and spend more money with you. But also. Um, they are satisfied because they will not return if they're not satisfied. Um, and that is basically what, um, what, where we find ourselves in that win-win situation. Um, we only get to that win-win situation if your philosophy towards um, customer service and customer retention is actually, um, is actually um, positive and correct. Right. Customer relationship management. Now, it's not customer marketing. We are talking about customer relationship management. It's a development as well as the maintenance of a mutually beneficial relationship. It is repetitive of what we've said already yesterday and earlier today. Mutually beneficial long term relationship. And if you form that with certain specific strategic clients, you're not going to have a five star relationship with all your customers. If you do, amazing. You're the company of the year, you're the service provider of the year. Um, and I'm not saying you're unique, but um, it's almost impossible because at some point they, they will be, they will. There's, there's a sort of a competition that, that starts among your clients as well because they want to be your favorite. Um, and, and, and that's, as I said, that's a healthy position to be in, but that's usually not the case. There are some clients who are loyal to you but, and you have a very good relationship with them, but um, it doesn't mean that um, they, are, um, they are necessarily special treatment um, offered offered to those individuals. But it is sometimes um, it is sometimes helpful to have um, a very, very good um, mutually beneficial relationship with strategically significant significant customers, for instance, where you maybe not um, might not be offering the entire service um, to a customer, but you're reliant on other um, service providers to assist you. Um, that's where that mutual, uh, that the mutual beneficial strategic alliance is is, is formed, um, and it is extremely important for a business, uh, especially in the services industry, to have that kind of relationship. Now, one way, one tool that we can use to um, Build relationships is to try the um, and, and the, this establish the customer lifetime value. In other words, um, the customer that stays with you for a period of time will spend more money with you the longer they stay with you. Um, <clears throat> and that is the lifetime of the customer that you refer to. Sometimes the lifetime is, is, is linked to the chronological age. In other words, um, they only terminate their um, relationship with your, with you as a service provider when they die. Um, and sometimes it basically is just um, for as long as they need that particular service. Um, however, the CLV, as, they, as it's most commonly known, customer lifetime value can be um, and can be 
um, seen as, um, and, and as, as, the, as the following. It is exactly what it says. You are trying to find and determine a present value for future income um, that might come from a particular customer. Now, there are four steps in your textbook that you can follow to, to um, that you can follow. I've listed the four on the screen. This becomes very technical and it's not necessary for you to go into um, this uh, in too much detail. In other words, how to accurately establish the future value of a customer or the lifetime value of a customer. What you will do however, is that you will calculate the revenue or the income um, that the customer will receive from that um, from that customer uh, or the company will receive from that customer or from a customer. Also calculate the cost that's associated with delivering the service to that customer. Um, determine the present value there. You're looking at what the profits for a particular period is and you also any factor in any discounts um, in that same period. And then finally, you determine what the present value is of all those um, inflows um, from a particular customer associated with your with your business, uh, and that is indicated as the CLV or the customer lifetime value. Um, <coughs> if we look at the next slide, that illustration that we have, there's no there's no figure 13.3 in your textbook. Don't worry about that. But this is just a, um, um, it's related to this particular um, to this particular strategic tool. But I just wanted to find something that um, can put the previous slide into into context. The customer lifetime value on the right hand side, CLV, is basically you're forecasting what the revenue is that you're going to expect from a particular customer. There's a very nice example in your textbooks as well. Let's say, for instance, um, a motor vehicle dealership um, wants to determine um, how, how many vehicles in the future will this particular customer still buy from me and how much will he spend every time. If um, the customer um, is one of those who upgrade his vehicle um, every three to five years and he's 30 years old, his life expectancy is 65 years. That's the duration. And then you um, will then you take that time that's left, for instance, that's 35 years. If he regularly upgrades his vehicle every five years, he's going to still buy seven vehicles potentially from you in future. Right? We are now estimating. We're not accurate because we can't see into the future. So over that period of time, the chances that you will spend, um, that you will buy seven um, vehicle, uh, vehicles on seven occasions in future from us, uh, based on current experience that we've had with this customer, um, usually on average, cost of vehicle is, let's say, 200 to 250,000 rand. It might start at 300,000 and come down over a period of time because he might be downgrading his vehicles by the seventh time that he that he trades it. Um, any services, the cost of service every year for the vehicle, if it's not part of a maintenance plan, for instance, will be costed into it as well. Um, you know what kind of discounts they, they, there's been um, that you want to offer this customer. If he has been loyal to you over 30 years and he's bought from you and from no other dealership, for instance, you might have an incentive um, package available that gives them discounts. You figure that into the whole calculation and that eventually um, is going to give you a customer lifetime value. In other words, um, in the scenario that I've mentioned, you probably um, expect hypothetically for this customer to spend over the next 30 years about uh, 2 million rand on your company. So that's an idea that, that is, um, it's again, it's just a tool to use to help you plan and anticipate. Um, because if you plan like this and you can actually put it in little blocks and in a diagram, um, the numbers start making sense. And then, especially if you have to convince your, your employees to buy into a, um, into a customer retention, um, um, strategy to ensure that they deliver five-star service all the time um, that will enable customers to remain with you um, and return to your business um, over a long over a longer period <clears throat> it, 
therefore establishing a long-term relationship with that customer, the numbers add up. Um, and that is the important thing. Sometimes people cannot see something uh, if it's not in a picture format or if the numbers doesn't make sense. If I tell you now that you're going to save um, over the next five years, you're going to save so much if you make these and these and these decisions now, um, it has not got that much value unless I also back it up and I maybe give you a graph and a um, diagram that actually uh, substantiates what and, and um, supports what I've just what I've just claimed because people like to see that people like to see and if they can see that this can happen in five years time they might um, um, they might be convinced to actually then do it but that's basically it's to don't go into too much detail I know on page 332 and 330 uh, 334 and 335 in um, 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 in your in your textbooks there's there's an example of how all these calculations work. This is not, at the end, I'm not saying this is not important, but um, um, in, in the context of this particular chapter, it's more important just to realize that there is a tool like this that we can use to strategize um, our um, relationship building um, process. Right. There's that image again that I've just um, referred to, which is, again, 13.3, not in your textbooks, but um, just a visual representation of what we have just said now about the customer lifetime value model. Now, something that has been um, very, that has been used very successfully, uh, obviously, are our rewards programs. Um, but before we get to our rewards programs, the reason why we offer that is obviously to retain customers and to reward them for their support um, and the um, um, extended use of our service. Um, many, many incentive schemes um, are available out there. Um, I've mentioned to you previously with banks at the start of the session, different color cards, ranging from a normal card, um, check card, or a savings um, debit card, or, um, up to maybe a platinum card. It's based on your, and just having said that, just yesterday I received a, a WhatsApp from my bank to say, you pre-qualify for an increase on your credit card overdraft. Now, that's the last thing that you want to have at the moment because, um, Oh, well, maybe based on your circumstances, it might be, um, it might be good. But um, what they obviously have done is they pulled my, I said yesterday, I was, has been involved with, um, or I've been a customer of NetBank since 1997, um, which means that it's, yeah, um, what, 24 years? Um, and progressively over time, they keep, have kept on sending you these WhatsApps and before that SMSs and before that um, um, emails to say so that because of you have an overdraft of 10,000 rand on your credit card and you have kept your um, um, you, you've kept your um, repayments um, according to agreements um, you qualify now and maybe to increase um, and obviously also the it happens. Um, it happens with um, um, along um, the same time that your status changes throughout the different life cycles that you that you um, that you um, um, go through in your life. I used the example yesterday of a particular bank that um, after I've um, borrowed money from them and repaid it for my studies, um, I approached them for um, for um, financing my, um, a vehicle, a bucket that I wanted to buy. Uh, and I said, Sir, sorry, you don't have a credit record. And then you realize that, you know what, you have to actually have credit to have a credit record. So if you're not owning the bank any, anything, you're not a good customer. Um, no, that's tongue in cheek. Um, but obviously they saw that um, the, there's a minimum limit that I qualify for. That was eventually then um, um, provided to me. I kept up with my payments, 
And after a number of years, they say, right, you now qualify for this. And I, on the meantime, parallel to that, might have um, received promotion at work and I'm earning more now. So I qualify for, um, for, for greater financial assistance. And that's how you progress through all these different um, these different or pyramid of of um, of um, um, the, that great customers according to um, what the, what their value and future value would be for a for a company. Um, let's see. This is very much linked to um, very much linked to your. Um, rewards programs as well and I think um, it's often used by by banks very successfully to to offer you that kind of in your in in, in your opinion it seems as um, as a as a special deal or but it is nice to know that you qualify for a certain amount it doesn't mean that you have to take it but it's nice to know that that option is available to you um, other um, businesses um, discovery um, when they started their medical plans um, from the start they linked up with um, um, with different uh, service providers other service providers to reward you um, to live a better lifestyle um, that's the vitality program so you Earn points for having your blood pressure taste tested and doing your medical every year. And if to, there's an improvement in your results, um, if you actually engage and enter races, you can actually um, accumulate points. If you go to the gym every time you swipe your card, you accumulate points. And the more points you get, you go through different levels, um, bronze all the way up to platinum. Um, you have to obviously maintain that um, that level by getting exactly the same. Um, or at least the same um, points as the previous year to stay on that level. I think we all know how the Vitality Discovery Incentive Program works. Uh, and that qualifies you based on the level that you at, uh, qualifies you for discounts on holidays, on buying um, um, at certain retail outlets um, like um, um, do South and Sportsman's Warehouse and flying with British Airways and booking certain holidays through uh, to certain um, to certain companies. That's part of this incentive scheme, and that's 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 a way of rewarding your customers. Um, other examples of a reward of a reward system is is, for instance, your smart shopper card that. Um, and the, the checkers loyalty card that, that they rewards card that they offer as well. Um, these are just ways in which you are rewarded um, in different ways. Um, the purpose from a service provider's point of view for having programs like these loyalty programs is to, <coughs> my apologies, is to a collect information about customers. This morning I got a WhatsApp about uh, from a, a spa here in the northern, uh, a particular spa um, in the northern suburbs, um, informing me of the new business hours that was extended um, um, last week. Um, how did they get my information? They got my information from previous times I visited there and I shopped there and I swiped my card. And because I swiped my card, the card obviously reads that information and they know um, where to get uh, where to get hold of me? Um, they're not. Um, um, it's it's a common practice that's used by many businesses nowadays um, to ensure that um, they just encourage people to to visit certain service providers um, rather than others. But um, that those are also examples of where you get different forms of reward for your loyalty. Um, the benefit for you obviously is that you get that information um, and then because you have rewarded the customer for their support and loyalty they will come back and they will spend more at your shop um, or use your service more um, as a result and your sales will obviously just increase um, customers benefit um, and how they benefit from it is the the kickbacks that they get the discounts on on, on certain on certain products or certain services that they use that are linked with this particular service provider. 
like I've said now with um, uh, with Discovery and British Airways, um, Virgin Active and all these um, other service providers. Anybody, um, any of you um, who have a particular uh, rewards card like that or a loyalty related um, card like that in your in your wallets? I, I know that many of you use um, um, cards of your parents, for instance. I know that's how I got started with, with um, the cards that I use that um, is linked to a loyalty program. Any of you using a loyalty program? Um, so I don't know if it's, I have like a cotton on card. <laughs> I get like <laughs> of course. That off here and there. Um, have you benefited from it? Yeah, I love it. Um, are they in regular communication with you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, emails. Oh, that's a service provider that actually does its job well. Um, if they communicate with you regularly, and they, obviously they give you the choice as well. When you when when you sign up for this loyalty program, um, they ask you how should we communicate with you. And I know if I sit in front of my computer for eight hours a day, um, they can send me emails. But if I know, um, majority of you would probably probably choose something else. Um, communicate with me through um, <coughs> through WhatsApp or SMSs. Um, my 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 cell phone number is the best way to contact me if you want to share information and they always give you I, I, I did something last week online and at the bottom they give you that option would you prefer us to send you um a regular um, um information on regular specials that we have now it gives you it doesn't force it upon you it gives you the choice if you click yes um, you can't complain if you um, if, if you start getting these WhatsApps um, on a regular basis. Um, but the majority of us are, um, are um, um, like receiving that information. So we, we want to get a heads up. So um, just before lockdown last year, a friend of mine, um, who we went to school together, and uh, he's at the provincial head office of, um, of the a specific supermarket group. Um, and he gave me a heads up every Thursday. I get a WhatsApp from him that says uh, there's specials on these and these and these products on the weekend. Um, just be aware. That's even before it goes onto the newspapers um, um, and and the normal platforms that they advertise. Um, so yeah, I'm quite yeah. That's quite nice to actually have a friend like that. But anyway, the, the majority of businesses are almost on that level nowadays that they are. Um, because of the relationship that they forced with you over an um, um, extended period of time, um, and in, in your cases, we've, just, we've established yesterday, obviously, because you are all still very young, um, your, the benefits for involvement with, um, um, with a particular service provider, um, you have not really, almost, almost not got to that point yet where you could have established a um, a good relationship with them yet because you are just about setting out now. Ten years from now, if I ask you the same question, you'll probably have um, a handful of, 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 of examples that you can provide me with um, that um, you are involved with um, and businesses that you have loyally supported over over the next ten years. Um, but that's what that's what all loyalty programs. Sorry, um, that's what all loyalty programs have. Um, or intend to um, to do, and that is to ensure that um, that it's it's like sorry, you know, I'm interrupting myself here. Side note to myself: um, the Bitcoin at the moment. Bitcoin is um, everybody is, is 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 very involved now and very uh, and trying to find out as much as possible about Bitcoins and how much should I spend and sell I spend and what's the risk involved and whatever. Some things like Bitcoin, for instance, um, very often you're not going to make money in the short run. Um, this is a this is a long term thing, at least long term, medium to long term, at least five years. It should be something that um, you invest in if you do not have, um, if if the money you're going to lose is not really going to um, it's not really going to affect you that greatly. Now, it's don't take your um, don't take money that you would have spent on your child's education for the next five years and invest that into into bitcoins, um, because you you're going to be anxious and you want to look every day what your um, 
um, how, how it's doing and um, how, how, how the prices have um, increased. And you'll be disappointed because it, it usually comes down before it goes up. Um, but these kind of things is um, um, like, like, like Bitcoin. Um, um, Bitcoin, for instance, is, it's, a, it's, a long -term, it's a long term investment. Um, you don't stand to make a lot of money in a very short period. Um, there are other and better ways to do that if, if that's the case. You almost invest and forget about it and then um, check it out in five years' time. You almost forget about it up to that point where they inform you and say, oh, hey, hello, remember five years ago? Oh, shucks, I almost forgot about that. Um, it, it, you must have, but, but we don't because we, we find ourselves in a, in a predicament that we have a um, a global recession, and, um, and as a result of that, people want money now. People want to, in, um, people will get involved in activities that can generate funds for them now immediately. And therefore, a loyalty program that provides you with discount now immediately at the toll when you swipe a card. If you bought 500 Rand to well, a groceries today and you're getting 20% discount on that, you want your 100 Rand deducted immediately off your, and, 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 and I know that's, I mean, it happened to me when I went um, for grocery shopping um, for the week on, on Friday afternoon. Um, I saved more than 300 Rand by swiping my, my card um, based on what the prices would be and what, um, what the prices are for me as part of the loyalty program. And that's, that's, that's substantial. Um, and I think that obviously are, or the advantages are, um, um, especially from a customer's point of view, is, is, is enormous. But there are also some disadvantages that we uh, can quickly look at. And the disadvantages for um, um, of loyalty programs is that they basically reward you for your um, they um, reward you for your behaviour. They do not necessarily build and contribute towards your um, loyalty um, um, and, and the relationship with the with the, with the company. Um, yes, it in, it's it's it increases the sales of the business or the service provider, um, but it doesn't really contribute to your relationship building at all. I mean, why are you doing it? You're doing it because you want that kickback. Um, doesn't mean that you are not going to, um, that you don't have another card from a different um, uh, service provider in your wallet as well that you can actually use too. I mean, if you were really loyal to um, to um, to one particular brand or service provider, you would only have their card in your in your wallet. But anyway, um, it's it's um, it's not it's not it doesn't give you the information or the opportunity to forge a strong relationship with the customer. Customers are not going to stay with a particular service provider because of a loyalty program. If the next service provider offers you a better loyalty program, um, and that's the that's the downside of it, um, because the customer is driven by the rewards that he's getting, and 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 not too much else. Um, I've touched on the short term nature of the um, of the benefits as well as the fact that sometimes people um, are not too happy to receive that um, that information on a regular basis. Um, and if people start getting random um, WhatsApps and SMSs from um, Pick and Pay and Spa and Toyota and all these service providers, then eventually um, they're going to get to all certain, um, certain individuals, certain customers um, are still very wary about the, the security um, of these things and and the infringement on on the privacy. Um, it was actually um, I'm quite I'm very much a, um, a tennis fan. Um, I watch a lot of tennis. Uh, I played a lot of tennis myself. I coach some tennis myself. Um, and it is French Open time. Um, and therefore, it was it's sad to me that that. Um, some of your top players, number number two player in the world, winner of the last two Grand Slams, um, Naomi Osaki, the, the Japanese tennis player, have actually, before the tournament started, said, you know what, I'm not going to do press conferences after the game because they, after each match, because they ask you the same questions over and over. And um, I'm actually concerned for my mental health because it impacts on me negatively if you keep on 
um, asking um, certain negative questions all the time. Um, and then she won her first game and she didn't do a press uh, conference and she was fined $15,000 for it. And then yesterday she decided, you know what, if this is going to be the trend, I'm actually going to pull out of the tournament completely. So she um, withdrew from the rest of the tournament because um, of, her, of her mental condition. And I think that, that sometimes um, it's important that we that we um, when we forge those long standing uh, the long term relationships with our customers that we that we set boundaries as to where we are prepared to go because sometimes um we can um we can do too much or um, we can yeah and and, and it's um, we don't know it it might come at an awkward time in that person's life and that can have a negative impact on that but usually as i said um loyalty programs um, works well um, if it's managed well by a service provider. Uh, it gives you very valuable information about your customers that you can use um, or that um, um, to use in future to to um, to determine what you anticipate they will spend based on the history of um, or their spending history with you. Right, um, people. What we're going to do um, tomorrow is. Um, what I want you to do, I want you to go through um, the case study, information provided on the case study. Um, it's a company that, that we are all familiar with. It's Woolworths, and Woolworths is, is, um, is, um, has been around for a while. But on page 342, page 342, um, we'll find two pages of information on all the different um, 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 departments and, and, and product and ranges and services that they offer. And then, like usual, we'll, we'll spend some time in, um, we'll spend some time in answering some um, questions related to the case study. So, Willie's on page 340 to say 342. If you can read through that, it would be great. Uh, and then we'll address um, the questions that I have on the screen there for you. Um, just to summarize, and then um, also I've got a few other case studies that I'm also going to bring to the discussion tomorrow, um, just to ensure that we um, that we at the hand or you can come up with ideas um, and 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 provide me with those ideas tomorrow, and then we can um, take it and run it from there, because I want to make it as relevant as possible um, with examples that's that you. Um, that you and your specific age group um, can relate to. Um, so if you can do that for me, that would be great. Any questions, anybody? Paige and Briska, Barney, you all good? All good, sir, thank you. Jessica, has Jessica joined us as well? I think so. No, that seems like it. Okay. If nobody has any questions, um, that's it for us. Believe it or not, um, yeah, uh, I trust that the rest of the day will work out well for you. Stay safe. It's a bit chilly outside, but the sun's out at least. It's not the rainy and cold and miserable as yesterday, but um, make the best of today. Um, but stay safe, please. Uh, and we'll chat again tomorrow, third period. Thank you, sir. All good. Enjoy your lunch. You too. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.